Get ready for another video in Alex's garage. All right, in the garage today, we're going to be going over um, installation of a distributor and the distributor drive gear on a 1977 MGB. Um, as removed, you can see there's a lot of uh, uh, predictable wear that I'm sure that many other cars have. For instance, um, this retaining plate, this is what uh, you would uh, loosen and tighten so that you can adjust the, the distributor timing by turning it. Um, so the design on this is that you would bolt this in place and then you would uh, open and close this to allow the distributor to turn. Well, you can see it's been over tightened. You can see how that bolt is bent um, and this part of the flange here has become deformed. Um, and what really needs to happen on this is um, these these bolt these bolt holes here, where you you bolt those into the into the engine block, you need to leave one of them so that you can loosen it when you want to make this adjustment, and that will give you this entire arm will be able to turn. Um, and and then when, once you get it adjusted where you like, then you tighten both this and this. Uh, so we're going to head over to the hardware store and see if we can find a new square bolt square head bolt. Um, to use for this and then I'm gonna make some adjustments get this thing all nice and cleaned up um, the next thing is um, we're gonna go over in a little while um, how to install the distributor drive shaft um, and orient it you notice that uh, part of the trick here is that this center shaft is off is off center and that that lines up with the bottom of the distributor here and you can see that the bottom of that this these uh, two little tabs here are slightly off center and they match up with that and the idea behind that is to keep it so that you can only install the distributor in one direction <clears throat> I've already cleaned up and painted this uh, um, retaining bracket this goes on top of the engine block and holds the uh, the distributor drive gear in place um, so I gotta gotta find a new bolt here uh, this little screw that goes in here, little flathead screw, um, those things they get torqued, and this, in this case, it it got kind of damaged. So we're going to see if we can find one that we'll, we can replace that with as well. Now, this distributor has a lot of things going on. First off, um, these O-rings are shot. You can see they're flat; they're no longer rounded, so they don't seal anything. Um, the idea behind uh, those O-rings is to keep keep things lubricated but you want to keep the oil in the engine so this is going to be quite dirty if I put this in there so we're going to get some new o-rings this o-ring in here is like degraded to almost nothing so we'll see if we can pull that out and get that replaced actually it looks like it's a shim and not an o-ring but um, we'll get that play out of there get this thing all cleaned up the um, you know there's rust these little springs they need to be cleaned up and get the rust off of here. <clears throat> the internals are also quite degraded. Now normally when you when you replace these with points, um, <laughs> look how crusty those points are. Um, you would you would replace in just just like this one little elbow section here and then the um, the capacitor I'm sorry The condenser um, would come out as a separate piece as well. We're going to replace all this stuff, get it all cleaned up, take all this out and clean it up, make sure that there's no corrosion or any kind of gunk that would impair its performance. Uh, the uh, vacuum advance looks like it's okay. We're going to give this a test. I don't know if I want to replace this yet. It has uh, an adjuster right here you can see inside there there's a there's a little spring that's supposed to engage the teeth of this knurled knob here so when you adjust these it'll make like a little ticking noise but that spring is shot we're going to clean that spring up and see if we can get that back into operation so, all right so i got the points and the condenser out and i'm about to take these the two screws out, one here on this side and one here on, on this side. And this one has a grounding cable that is barely hanging together by a string. 
you know, this is such a critical system. Um, and if you have anything like that, that's going to cause a, a resistance or impedance in the electrical um, uh, currents, <clears throat> you really need to address that. So um, I don't know that this wire is going to be, it's even really bad at that end. This wire is going to be something that I can, uh, we'll see. Maybe I can put a new wire on there. Um, it needs to be flexible. That's why they have a, a cloth braid on it. But um, I don't know, we'll see. I uh, just wanted to kind of interject that. All right, so once you get this plate off, and this plate, this little tab right here, is connected to this little spring that holds the uh, the vacuum advance in. That's the only thing that really makes that complicated. The um, there's two little screws on the outside that that hold this in place. And so once you get that off, you can get access down in here to see the um, the weights. These uh, these weights when the distributor's spinning, the weights fling out and they will advance the center shaft when this this weight comes on forward like this. You can see how it, it just kind of moves it a little bit. That's what these weights are going to do. They have a, a centripetal force that pulls them out and it will turn this against these springs and advance the, uh, the center shaft. Um, so uh, this looks pretty nasty in here. <laughs> Um, I'm going to do what we can to clean that out. I'm going to pull this nut or this little screw off here and we'll pull the, the bottom half of the shaft off and, and see what all we, we can actually, what's maintainable in there. Moving on. All right, well, that screw is not coming out. Um, I could not get it to uh, to loosen and I don't want to strip it it's just a, uh, a flat screw with uh, the only thing that I would be able to accomplish by taking that off is to remove this outer sheath here that, that has the timing lobes um, and uh, possibly gain access to these weights down in here to clean them out so I think what I'm going to end up doing is instead of taking it apart to clean it I'm just going to clean it with spray we're going to do what we can to, to clean out the inside here and make sure that there's no resistance in any of these moving parts. Um, spray it down with some uh, carb cleaner initially and then we'll, we'll spray it down with some, uh, um, some lubricant like w, WD-40 or something like that just to make sure that they move properly um, and that they, they operate the way that they're expected. Um, <laughs> I did take this O-ring off but it didn't come off friendly it broke so it obviously was crunchy it was it doesn't have any flex to it at all it's it definitely needs to be replaced um, so the next thing here is uh, this this top sheath here so uh, the centripetal advance happens in the bottom of the distributor the vacuum advance happens with this set of plates here you see how they kind of move um, they have a, a friction bearing right in here. And look, at there's all kinds of dirt and gook in there. So we're going to clean that out. Um, you can see there's, there's just a little tab here that keeps it in place. If you advance it all the way, then it will disengage. Uh, and you should be able to just pull that apart. There we go. All right. So we're going to clean off the inside of this. Maybe put a little bit of grease in there just to make sure that these things can slide well. It's all sticky. Yeah, there's no way, even if I had a good vacuum advance, there's no way you could rely on that to advance um, without resistance. So we're gonna clean that up nice too. All right, so I got this uh, breaker plate assembly all cleaned up. See, it moves nice and smoothly. There's no grit or anything in there. Um, this right here controls the distance, you know, as far as where it moves, won't move too far this way. If you move it this way too far, then this little spring will fall into the groove and you can take the whole thing apart. 
This little spring right here is what keeps the ground on from one plate to the next. Although they're, they're connected here. I don't know why you would really need to have that, but it also kind of keeps things regulated. I don't know. Whoops, there you go. Like I said, it falls apart if you go too far. Um, so anyway, um, I've also uh, re-soldered the ground wire. Uh, it's connected here with a little clamp. And um, replaced all the old nasty um, insulation. This was cloth insulation, which had degraded with um, a heat shrink. It's a very thin wire. It's very flexible. Heat shrink won't make it springy or anything. Um, and so we don't have to worry about, um, you know, causing any other undue resistance. Um, the way that this thing works is when it's mounted in the distributor, the vacuum advance, this little thing right here, that little hole, goes right over the top of this little pin. And it will advance the spark accordingly based on the vacuum, right? That's how it's supposed to work. Uh, but that only works if the vacuum actually pulls a vacuum. And uh, so we're going to test this thing right now. I have it hooked up here with, uh, with a hose onto my brake bleeder kit. This should pull a vacuum down to 15 pounds. But... You can see it's not doing anything. So I have a feeling that that diaphragm is toast. Uh, it's a piece of rubber and it's, you know, been sitting in the, in the garage for, or in a barn forever. So um, we're going to go ahead and replace this. There's no sense cleaning it up if it needs to be replaced. Um, what should happen is when you draw a vacuum, this little spring should go in. And um, it does have range of motion. You can get it to move. But that, that you shouldn't be able to move it manually. You have to move it with the vacuum, and it's not pulling a vacuum. So uh, the diaphragm in here is toast. The spring that holds the diaphragm closed is working. So I'm sure you have frame, range of motion, but without being able to draw a vacuum, there's no way to get that to work as it was intended. Um, so um, that's how that goes. Now, taking this thing apart was no easy feat. So at the end of... This goes through... In here like this this shaft comes out right here and it gets connected to this little um, knurled knob here which is supposed to be running on this little spring if you can see that little spring but it's kind of sprung it doesn't really have much strength left in it um, so we're going to order a new one um, and uh, inside of there, there's a little, there's a spring that goes in here. So that keeps this, you know, taut against that right there. It makes it so that it won't just randomly change. Um, and at the end of all that, at the end of this shaft, there's this little clip. I don't know if you can see that on my fingers here. It's a little U-shaped clip that... Um, grabs the end of this post right here. The end of this post. Um, so that's how that all comes apart. And when we get a new uh, vacuum diagram or diaphragm, we will um, reinstall that. Uh, so next thing up is to clean the innards of this distributor. One of the more critical components is these hubs. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, fit this with standard contact points. Eventually, I plan on either replacing the distributor altogether or putting on a Pertronics um, uh, electronic uh, conversion kit that will have a little thing that slides over it, with a little magnet. And, um, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm, going to, I'm going to set it up with uh, uh, standard contact points. And that way I'll have an opportunity to do a video on this and an opportunity to do a video on the conversion. So it'll be um, a learning experience for everybody. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started on cleaning this up. Uh, and then we'll cut back in when we have more to, more to cover. Well, it turns out this vacuum unit is $109 to replace. 
that just made this a uh, more expensive to repair than to replace type situation. So um, this distributor is garbage. Um, we are going to replace this with uh, either a Pertronics. You can buy the Pertronics flamethrower for $174 off of Amazon. Um, or the uh, 45D that's available uh, from Moss. It's only $56. So um, be pretty unwise to chase good money after bad to replace this, um, this vacuum diaphragm. Uh, for $109. Uh, as it is, this vehicle is not, I mean, I'm not sure. I mean, if you're trying to restore a car to its uh, factory, um, you know, original parts and everything, you could chase that, that monkey all day. But in this case, uh, this is a 77 with uh, an 18V engine that has a, a 1974 head. Um, and, you know, it's a mix match of parts. So, uh, it's not worth it to to try to keep anything um, original. Uh, it's just it's just not worth it. So um, we are not going to continue uh, fixing this distributor. As much as I was having fun doing that, uh, it's just not worth the time and money to do that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and finish this video with uh, installation of the uh, di distributor drive spindle and um, how to orient this in, into the block and everything. Um, and then we'll pick it up uh, with part two when we get a new distributor. So um, that's how we're going to end this. So let's go ahead and, and get this spindle installed on the engine block. All right, so first thing you need to do when you're going to uh, put this spindle back in is you need to orient the engine so that uh, cylinder one is at top dead center. So you can see down here I've got the, line, the uh, timing lines all lined up. And... Um, when, uh, when, when you have that set, it means that uh, uh, the cylinder is at top dead center, but you need to have both of the valves closed as well, uh, because that means that you'll be in the ignition stroke, right? Um, and so the way that you find that out is you pull out the, uh, the valve cover, and with the valve cover off, if, if the valves are wiggly, if these uh, tappets are tapping, then you know that both of these valves are closed. And uh, the other option would be that uh, with that on top dead center, you might have the valves um, open. And when the valves are open, you can see like down here, these are tight. They're not wiggling at all. So when they're open, they're loose, or when they're closed, they're loose. And when they're, clo when they're open, the valves are, are compressed. Um, so this tells us that cylinder one is on top dead center in the ignition stroke. All right, so um, let's go ahead and, uh, and move forward from here. The, uh, um, the, the spindle has a number of uh, bearing surfaces. This bearing surface right here is, um, let me see if I'm in focus. So this, this bearing surface right here is what it goes down into uh, and it, it, it runs um, in a little bearing in there. So you want to make sure you get some assembly oil on there. And then this is the gear that actually runs on the camshaft. Uh, so you want to get some assembly oil in there as well. Um, when you put the distributor on, um, you're going to want to put some, uh, uh, some assembly oil in here as well because the, um, the retaining housing goes on the top to keep it uh, in place. So Assembly oil here, here, and here. Now, this little bolt right here doesn't is not part of the, the arrangement, but um, it's a five sixteenths with a uh, fine thread, and it's uh, helpful so that you don't you know to be able to stick it in there, right? Uh, the next thing to uh, to orient is how do you get it to know what's in the right direction, right? So, as I mentioned earlier, this little slot is not in the center. There's a, high, uh, a thick spot and a, and a thin spot. If you're looking at it, you can see it's kind of an optical illusion. This one here is bigger than this one down here. It's actually easier to see when you're looking at it um, in this direction. You can see that the center line of this bolt is off center, right? So that makes this the, the bigger one. 
you want to put it so that the bigger one is up. And what you want to do is you want to install this horizontal. And when it starts to mesh with the uh, uh, with the gear inside on the uh, on the camshaft, it'll kind of slide. It'll it'll rotate a little bit. And don't worry about that. As long as you start horizontal with the the big one on the top, then everything will be copacetic. So let's go ahead and get this thing installed. Stuff is gooey like snot. Spread that film around. All right, so big side on the top. You want to slide that baby in horizontal. When it engages, you'll feel it kind of turn. There it goes, just a little bit of a turn. And then you know you got it. And you can just remove that screw. And it's floating. So right now it's floating. And that's what this thing does. This, this right here is a bearing surface that connects, that, that holds that down in place. Slide that baby in there. Now, there's three bolt holes in here. These two um, are taken up by the uh, retaining bracket. When you put that in place. And you can see that when you put the retaining bracket in there, these will be these will be on top of that right but this third hole right here with the flange that's where you put that little screw and that little screw is not really intended to do anything more than to keep this oriented and in place when you're jockeying these things around it just 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 intended to keep it in place so you know you don't have to put too much torque on it obviously it's not going to back out because it's got this in the way when you put it in place um, so uh, all you need to do from right now is to put that little uh, that little screw in place right there and you'll be golden all right so uh, i'm going to go ahead and clean this one up and uh, as soon as we get our new distributor we'll uh, we'll finish up this installation of the distributor on uh, a part two video um, and that will be uh, uh, a whole new distributor rather than uh, re rebuilding the one that we have uh, so if you like these videos if you have any questions or comments about this process please make sure you comment like and share with all your friends it helps to get more com comments from other people and uh, helps the community to grow. Um, so that's all I have for today, and we'll check back with you later. Have a good day.